السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ صلاة والسلام علیکم یا رسول اللہ الصلاة والسلام علیکم یا حبیب اللہ وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم الحمد لله it's house full the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم once said that how can I be at ease how can I relax we all want to relax we all always talk about rela relaxing, we are too stressed. The Prophet Sallallahu said, How can I relax? When? Israfil Alayhi Salam has already taken the trumpet in his mouth. And his one leg is forward. He has raised the trumpet. And he is looking at the arush of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> and he is waiting for the command, for the green light. As soon as the command will come, he will start blowing the trumpet. The Prophet sallallahu is looking at this position of Israfil alayhi salam. And he is saying, how can I relax? And Israfil salam is already in that position. That means we are so close to Qiyamah that he is already in that position just waiting for the nod, just waiting for the green light. And we know what will happen when he starts blowing the trumpet. Sound. Have you imagined how will Qiyamah come? The power of sound. The destruction caused by sound, that the noise will be slow and gradually it will increase and to such an extent that people will perish. All the creatures will perish, they will die due to sound. Can you imagine the power of sound? The power of the trumpet and the trumpet is making this noise, so how huge is the trumpet? And if the trumpet is that huge, the question that brother asked, how huge the angel is, who is holding that trumpet, which has the capacity to destroy all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only the living things, the mountains will start flying, the skies will fall down. This is the day of prayer. And on that day will happen which most people they reject. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise the people and they will be accounted for whatever they have done. This is what people don't want to believe. This is the notion which people want to reject. How will Allah raise us? We have been cremated thousands of years ago. How will Allah raise us? We have been buried thousands of years ago. How will Allah raise us? There are no traces left. There are no bodies left. Everything has decomposed, it has turned into soil, into ashes. How will Allah raise? The answer is that if it was not difficult for Allah to create you the first time round from nothing, then how can it be difficult for Allah to create you the second time? And this is not creating, this is giving you a new life. If He can make you from nothing, from one drop, from one impure drop. And today we were looking at the ayat. وَتُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَتُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتِ مِنَ الْحَيِّ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who creates the living from the dead and the dead from the living. Living from the dead. You know, an egg. Is the egg alive or dead? The egg does not have life, but what comes out of it has life. Hmm? Allah has emerged a living from a non-living. And vice versa, a living hen gives an egg. A living gives birth or lays something non-living. 
But this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is making it happen. The Creator is making it happen. So why is it difficult for Allah to do it again when He has already done it once? And then, when the first trumpet is blown, everything will perish except the four angels. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the other three angels to die as well by Israel alayhi salam, the angel of death. And then finally, Israel alayhi salam will also made to die just to prove a point that there is only one God who will remain that day. And there will be no one, no one or nothing else, nothing whatsoever, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he will ask, where are the kings? Where are those people who wanted to be the kings in the world? Where are they? Today the kingdom is mine and I alone am, am the king. And then he will start raising. The first again to be raised will be Israfil alayhi salam who will blow the trumpet again and people will rise. And then we are coming to the point that when people will rise, they will go towards the Maidan in Mashar or the plain where the accounting will take place. And the way they will go is different for different people. Some will be riding. That is the honor that they will have because of their belief and because of their good deeds. Some will be riding to the plains of judgment. Some will be walking. And some will be dragged. That is utter humility. They will be humiliated. They will be dragged. And then chaos, absolute chaos. Can you imagine from Adam alayhi salam, the first person till the last person? If you go to Bombay, you feel crowded. Ooh, too much pollution, too, much, too many people, too many cars. You feel crowded. And other cities, for example, go to London. Okay? And that is why when they come to Bolton, they say, this is like a village for us. So, you feel crowded, people sort of fall on each other, people are in their faces. But there, on the day of Qiyamah, this will be one form of azab where there will be too many, too many people. And everybody will be without clothes. But obviously there is no nafs. Obviously you are too worried about yourself to notice anybody else. And you will be going towards the plane of judgment and that plane is such which is made of copper and there is nothing over it nothing whatsoever today if you want to hide you can hide underneath a mountain or under a tree or besides a rock or other places but on that day there will be nothing of this sort just one plain ground no trees, no mountains, no hills, nothing whatsoever. And we all will be present there. All of us. All of us together. And people will start getting frustrated. Then the sun will be brought right over their heads. We've heard this. And people will start sweating. And the sweat will rise. It will first be absorbed in the ground and then it will start rising. And it will rise for some up to the ankles, for some up to the knees, for some up to their waist, and the limit is up to your noses. So just about living, because there is no death over there. So it's, it is up to this level, some of them. That means literally drowning in their own sweat. And a number of years, there are different narrations. In one say 40 years, they will be looking and waiting. What is happening? Why this wait? Ya Allah, please start the accounting. It doesn't matter if you throw us into hell. But we want to get out of this situation. So long, people will be there in the plains of Qiyam. Allah. And then, the Prophet ﷺ, he explains different scenarios as to what will happen and how the accounting will start and how the shafat will start. That is different. But, for example, 
The Prophet sallallahu wasallam states that who is a muflis person? Who is a destitute? Who is a poor person? People said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, a person who does not have wealth, a person who does not have property, he is a poor person. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, no, he is not a poor person. I will tell you who a poor person is. He says, there will come a person on the day of Qiyamah with nakies and virtues like mountains. Plenty of virtues, plenty of good deeds. And he will be satisfied that my good deeds will be enough to take me to Jannah. But then, the cases will be opened. The register will be opened. The book of deeds will be opened. And it will emerge that he had backbited against this person. He had slandered this person. He had talked evil about this person. All those people will come and they will demand from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, we want justice. And that is the day of justice. This world is full of injustice. Full of injustice. The rich can get away with it. The powerful people can get away with it. There are no rules, there are no laws for the rich and the powerful. All those who are punished are always, mostly, poor people. Everywhere in the world, this is the case. Somehow or the other, by the right way or the wrong way, black way or a white way, the rich, the famous, the popular, the people who have authority, influence, they get away with it. But not on that day. There is no zulm on that day, there is only justice. And that is why I say to brothers, don't be too bothered if somebody does wrong to you in this world. Don't be too bothered because there is one day of justice. If you are not able to take your revenge in this world, do not worry. There is one day where Allah will make you take the revenge. And Allah will repay you. And how He will repay you, inshallah, we will look at that. And we will just look at one hadith today. That this person will come thinking, my virtues are great. I have mountains of nakis. I will go to Jannah easily. But then these people will come and they will say, He backbited against me. I need your nakis. That means there is only one currency on that day. No pounds, no dollars, no wealth, no gold. There is only one currency on the day of Qiyamah. All the dealings, all the give and take will happen in one currency and that is your deeds. Your deeds, your good deeds or your bad deeds. This is the only currency on that day. So those people will say, now, because he did wrong to me in the world, I need compensation. You know the compensation culture in this dunya, in this world? Oh, you were not in the car, but still you had that, what, what, do, you, what do you call this? Yeah, whiplash. You were not there, you were not in the city, but because an accident happened, for somewhere in your family, you had a whiplash. Why? Because you want to gain that money? This is the level of lies you, you tell? Who are you fooling? And what are you going to do with that money? Allah, but we are Muslims. And we are not allowed to lie. It doesn't matter to whom. It doesn't matter to insurance companies, or to the authorities, or to the government. We are not allowed to lie. Because, alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. And we have a constitution that we need to follow. So on that day, obviously nobody will be able to lie. This person will say, he did wrong to me. I need something, I need my compensation. What will be given? Okay, you take his nakis. There goes the naked. Okay, a big chunk of it. And the second person will come, oh, he killed me. It went. The third person will come. He lied about me. It goes. The fourth person will come. He did this to me. He did that to me. He took my mal. He took my wealth. He took my... Uh, he defrauded me. He deceived me. And so on and so on. And finally, those mountains of nakis will disappear. Those mountains of good deeds that he came with will disappear. But still the accounting is not over. He still has a lot of things on his head. And this is a normal human being. I'm not talking about Firaun. 
a normal human being, these are the things which we do in our daily lives unknowingly. Not paying heed to it, just neglecting it. So, and this is happening to Muslims. This is happening to Muslim, not a non-Muslim. The Prophet said, in my Ummah this will happen. Because for the non-Muslim, there is no question of good deeds. Good deeds come after faith. Only after faith you can start building your good deeds. Without faith there are no good deeds. If you do a good deed, without faith, Allah will repay you back in this world before you die. Some way or the other. But there, the one who takes his deeds is only the person who goes with Imam. So now, he still has a lot on his head. All his nakis are finished. What happens? Okay, this person will now say, Ya Allah, give my guna to him. If he does not have any nakey to give me, if he does not have any good deed to give me, give him my bad deeds, give him my sins. And now he is taking sins. Can you imagine this? He came with a lot of nakies, good deeds, but now he is taking sins of people. And very soon he will have mountains of sins instead of those mountains of good deeds. And now these sins will be enough to take him into hell. Now we need to be careful. This is for that person who came with mountains of nakis. But still he could not save them or he did not safeguard them. What about people like us brothers who don't have nakis? We don't have nakis. We don't even do the obligatory. We don't even pray namaz. We don't even uh, obey our parents. We don't have time to pray the Quran and so on. We don't have time to do the obligatory bits. We won't be going with mountains of good deeds. And of course, we have a lot of bad deeds. If you look at our day and night, if you count, and if you have the courage to count, then count your bad deeds one day. Over weekend, start today until Monday. See how many good deeds you did, see how many bad deeds you did. And that means you will have to count your every word. You will have to check your every word. Did you lie? You did not lie. Did you backbite? You did not backbite. Did you slander? You did not slander. You have to watch over every word that you say. Is it possible for you? Might not be, but it is possible for the angels. They are writing each and everything, whatever you said, the way you said. Even more clearer than the HD camera that is over there. <coughs> hmm? They can picture you, everything, and it will be played on the day of Qiyamah. You don't need YouTube over there. So universal YouTube, everybody will be watching. What will happen? This is, this is just to make you realize. Inshallah, we will continue with the stories of the day of Qiyamah, hopefully next week. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to do good deeds and stay away from bad deeds.